All right, so TypeScript, just like many other languages, has the concept of an enum, which is a way to have like a constrained set of values, I suppose. So you can imagine if we're creating a website, maybe where users have different ways of authenticating for that website for their second factor, maybe they can use uh, push, or maybe they can use voice, um, and no other options. So here's a way we can create like a constrained set. These are the only two ways they can authenticate. Um, so if I do console log auth method push and voice, and then we'll run that. You can see it's giving me a value of zero for push, which is this one here, and then one for voice. So when you declare an enum and you just say what the keys are, it's automatically going to populate it with the values. Uh, so you can imagine that uh, we've deployed our website and now we're adding a new authentication method, maybe SMS. And so an engineer comes in and says, okay, I'm just gonna come into this enum and I'm gonna add SMS here um, and I'm gonna merge my uh, pull request and now prod explodes because voice is now two because it's implicitly adding, you know, iterating the value for each one. So just by putting SMS into the middle of that enum, we've now changed what the value of voice is, which is not good. Um, so you could say, okay, well, you know, we're going to have a rule where you have to only append the enum, and when you do that, now voice has gone back to being one, so everything is okay again, even though enums are terrible. Uh, so you could say, all right, well, we could, get, we could get around that by maybe saying, okay, we're having everybody explicitly say what the values are on this enum. All right, and then if somebody comes in and they add SMS, they're going to put two, and everything is okay. You know, we didn't change it because we aren't, uh, using implicit values on that. Well, everything's still not good because enums are terrible. And here's another reason why they're bad. What do you think they are at runtime? Let's say, for example, we want to have like a dropdown that have all the values of that enum. So we expect to get, okay, object values. We expect to get maybe zero, two, one. When I run that, nope, I get an array of all the keys and all the values. You know, that's, so what, what's going on with this? What is, uh, we you know when we transpile TypeScript, an enum to uh, JavaScript for runtime, what is it creating? I have no idea why, there's probably a reason for it, but it creates an object with keys that are the strings of the numbers and their corresponding, or the values that are the numbers and the corresponding keys, but then also the keys and the values. It's, it's, it's bizarre. Um, there's another downside for that, because let's say we have a function to do something and we say we want to accept an auth method um, and so one of the nice things about enums is I could say, all right, do thing uh, auth method push, and that's going to be okay. Or SMS is going to be okay. If I pass, you know, some string, oh, that's, you know, that's not right. Whatever that is, is not a valid value. That's all fine and dandy, except for some reason, and I don't know why, except maybe because enums are terrible, you can put any number in there, and it's not going to find an issue with it. Uh, oh, because I have a leading zero. And it runs. Don't know why. Don't know why TypeScript didn't find an error with that because all the values are zero, two, and one. So maybe we can get around this problem by instead of using uh, numbers, let's use strings for our values. So now we have an error here, and if I put in any other string, we get an error there. So we've solved that problem, that's great. You know, now it runs. Wait, what's your problem? Oh, that's intentional. There is an error. But then I, I still can say auth method, voice, everything's good. Um, and then for some reason, now if I uh, console log auth method, it's now the kind of the object that we would expect. We're no longer doing that bizarre thing with the keys and the values. Um, so you could say, all right, we've solved all the problems now because we have an enum where all the values are strings. But I would argue that we have some foot guns. Like we're not preventing anybody from using the numbers. Like we're using a constrained set of uh, behavior for the enum itself. Like is there a better way to do that than to use enums? Um, and I would say there is. What if we used an object instead of the enum. It's gonna give us a problem here saying it's not a type. 
Um, we can get away with that by saying, uh, by overriding the type. So we're going to say, create a new type with the same name. And it's going to be type of auth method. And then we're going to get all the keys. So this is going to be all the values from that auth method. It's saying string because this is an object that's not a constant. So we can say as const here. So now auth method, the type, is all of the values on that object. We can use it as a type here. So I can say auth method voice. And I could also just type the string, too, if I wanted to, because it's really just asking for a string. I could change this to a number if I wanted to, and it would still work. Now I can type 2, and it's OK with that. Auth method push. And that's the end of my talk. This is, this is a much better, I think using an as const object and then overriding the type, you remove all those pitfalls that you have with an enum. I gotta, what's the benefit of the object and creating a type out of the object versus just an, a, uh, a union of the strings themselves? Uh, so like just bypass the object altogether? Yeah. I do that. In most of my code, just like instead of doing all that, just actually like create, you know, manually create it like that. Um, some people like enums. I mean, there's arguments for it. It can kind of make discovery a little bit better in your code because you can search for like auth method dot to be able to find usage of these different values. If you're just using bare strings all over the place, then, you know, searching for that in the code base is problematic. But there's arguments for both ways. Makes sense. Thanks. When you use the random integer with, I guess, a defined enum, what is the actual like auth method? What what does it return? I guess if you were to print that out, uh, print out what? So if you remade an enum where it was just zero one two, and then you put in like a thousand as your method call, even though TypeScript says it's okay, what does it give you if you were to actually print out that value? So you mean bring back the enum with numbers. And then if you put like a thousand in here, is that what you're yeah. saying? Yeah. So that's okay, but what is the actual met like what's the type that or what is the value that's put in there? So if you just console.logged out auth method. In here? Yeah. It's just gonna be a thousand because you're passing the uh, value. Okay. I'll comment that out. Yeah, and just, just to piggyback on that, uh, this is one of the things that I love slash find interesting about TypeScript is that it's it's all compile time. So when you're doing that, it, it's still JavaScript. So yeah, you can put something in there if it conforms, and then it just goes through, which is like the thing that I was talking about, the in. Sometimes you need to like inspect that stuff to like figure out, is this real, and that sort of thing. But yeah, it's a really good question, I thought, what's actually <laughs> what's actually going in there. So because are there any keys on auth method? So if you tried printing a specific key off of it, but I guess enums don't have keys associated with them. Uh, I mean, so you mean like console logging object keys on it? Sort of. More so like if, that, if the type auth method had some other key associated with it, like it was an object, and you tried printing it even though it's... A thousand would that actually produce like an error once you run the program, even though TypeScript says that it's a okay. But I guess you wouldn't get in that situation because again, enums aren't objects, so there's not going to be anything associated with auth method. Yeah, I mean there, you know, there is something associated with it at runtime. It's like this kind of it's an object, but I guess maybe you didn't understand the question. I'm sorry. So I, I, I think this is actually the only TypeScript that you can write that does not compile out completely, right? So this, this does introduce a runtime function or something, the declaration? Oh, decorators, okay. So I think that's also like another reason to maybe consider not using it, right? Because you're, you're sort of tying yourself into it for forever <laughs> at some point. Yeah, especially if there's weird behavior associated with right. it too. Like, yeah, it's it's better to just think of TypeScript as something that's completely stripped out, and you're left with this kind of more obvious runtime. Cool. 
Um, so this one's super fun, and I'm kind of curious. Looking at your type of auth method, key of type of solution, where auth method turns into like this this golden age object, um, the way things ought to be. There's often a problem I see very similar to this, where like these keys, like push, SMS, voice, they're gonna have different kinds of values in different objects, right? Like maybe in this auth method thing, it corresponds to a string or whatever, and then there's a collection of methods that correspond to each one, and then there's a collection of permissions that corresponds to each one. And I'm wondering, what's the, what's the easiest way to navigate that in TypeScript, like this collection of keys? Because there's two things. There's one, you can create these objects that conform but are missing keys. Maybe I don't want them to conform. You know, because like when you, because now you've got this great type auth method and you can say, well, the keys of this object is going to be one of these things. You follow what I'm saying? So you're saying like maybe you, in one spot you want to display a title of, a, of an auth method. Maybe yeah. in another spot you want to display certain feature flags you have to enable. And you're going to have multiple objects, but you want them all to have the same Set of keys. keys. Well, I'm not on 4.9, but satisfies is good for that. I guess it's because it's good for yeah. another satisfy demo. Without satisfies, I mean, you could do, um, one thing I've done is like, okay, we'll create like an auth methods array that has uh, push yeah. SMS voice, declare it as constant, which kind of makes it a tuple. And then you can do type auth method equals uh, type of auth methods number. Oh, it's redeclared. Yeah, so now it's those, and you mm. can do like record, or I think you want to do key in auth method string. And then I think if you left one off, yeah, now you're going to get an error. Yeah. So that's forcing I'm, it to be exhaustive. Yeah, I'm going to take a cell phone picture of this real quick. <laughs> you just solved one of my problems at work, which I appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> but in all seriousness, but that, but that actually introduces another problem because you may, in other places, say, well, like, I've defined this object with all of my, maybe this is auth method titles, you know. And then maybe later you want to say, like, oh, I want to get a type, which is auth method title. And for that, I wanted to do that, like, type of auth method titles, key of, type of, it's a lot of typing sometimes. And like, okay, this is gonna give me all of the values for it, nope, it's string. Because, you know, what we've talked about up here, we're saying it's string, we're losing the inference that we talked about before. Mm. So, I mean, I'm not on 4.9 on here. What I would maybe do is do the satisfies mm. that, and then you get the force constraint, you have to be exhaustive of all the keys, and then you can also do the inference if, if I had 4.9, do the inference. Yeah. Um, and kind of what you're talking about too, I think is like a huge problem of complexity in large code bases, this problem of like coordination between different parts where like you add one more thing, what are all the places I have to go to to update to make it conform yes. to this new thing? And if you use this approach of like making sure all these mappings are exhaustive, you'll get TypeScript errors that just tell you, here's all the places you have to update when they add one more thing, yeah. which I think is really powerful. It is. Thanks for letting me hate for a little bit. <laughs>